Two minutes, please stop taking my picture. See, that's what you want at a comedy night, a professional, a professional introduction. Just give it the old raffle host, puppy, oh my god, a bit of a problem with that one. Dave Spikey from Phoenix Nights there. Thanks Dave, that was, did we all enjoy the raffle? I have never, I have never seen so many prizes. Put back. So, let me just take this audience in. I've got to say, this is the best looking audience I have gigged with this evening. It's fantastic. Oh, no, honestly, just most of the people in here are pretty attractive. And then there's a few that have let the side down, clearly. Um, I've never done, I must admit, I, I was a bit hesitant about doing a bunch of, I'm going to have to change this lead, to a bunch of Freemasons, but I shook Tanz's hand as I come in, um, nearly broke my wrist. Um, and I, I've got to be honest, I don't know too much about Freemasonry, um, and then I looked on Wikipedia, and you guys, you're just amazing what you do, it, it's, it's fantastic, you know, you've got... Shall, shall I just change this lead before we go? Because yeah. it's really going to happen. Two sets. Just chat them up. Just chat them up. Right, I think that's better. Is that better? Yeah, oh my. Right, let's, let's just try it again, shall we? Because that's what we want for a professional comedy evening, isn't it? You want equipment that works, you want a receptive audience, you want a raffle where half the prizes go back, which is great. But no, free ma I, I didn't realise just how big the Freemasons organisation was. I mean, in the UK alone, 200,000 members. That's one hell of a lot of a big blokes club, isn't it? Um, and ladies, you're not to be outdone. 800 members. Um, what's going on there, chaps? Just out of interest, what is going on there with the ladies? They are so far behind you, isn't it? This is 2023. Not 1723, when the Mason started. So ladies, you've got quite a bit of catching up to do. Have we actually got any female Masons in here this evening? Look at that. It's not going to happen, is it? One. One. So I take it most of the guys in here, you are members, you are Freemasons, yeah? That's brilliant. I've got to be honest, I, I couldn't be a Freemason because I've had a look at it. Um, I don't believe in a supreme being because uh, my wife tells me there's only one supreme being. <laughs> but it's your rules and regulations. Would you say, gentlemen, that you are all up on your rules and regulations? No. Do you know how many pages your rules run to? On your current website, 176 pages, 208 rules. And I thought what we do tonight, just as a show of how interested in the Masons you men actually are, we'll have a little quiz. <laughs> just shout out when you know the answer. Rule 156, paragraph A, section 2. Behaviour after the lodge is over and the brethren not gone. So does anybody want to give me just the first three words of that rule? Anybody? None of you know, do you? You haven't got a clue. Swing your hook. It's what? <laughs> Swing your hook. Not far off. Your, your rules are just... I, I mean, I don't know who wrote these. 
just fantastic. Ladies, this is what your blokes should adhere to. So this is uh, 176 paragraph A, rule number two, behaviour after the lodge is over and the brethren not gone. You may enjoy yourself with innocent mirth. <laughs> really? What the fuck is innocent mirth? It gets worse. Treating one another according to ability, but avoiding all excesses. Or, <laughs> and I love this bit. or forcing any brother to eat or drink behind his limitation. Or hindering him from going when his occasions call him. So basically, when he gets a text from his wife to say, you better be home in 30 minutes, you can't say, no, you're not going home, mate, sorry. Or doing or saying anything offensive, or that may forbid an easy and free conversation. For that would blast our harmony and defeat our laudable purposes. Does any of you know what a laudable purpose is? Absolutely not a clue. 176 Rule B, Section 4, Behaviour in the Presence of Strangers. I love this. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I mean, it's like, honestly, it's just like going back in time. You shall be cautious in your words and courage that the most penetrating stranger... <laughs> Has anybody here experienced a penetrating stranger? Perhaps some of the ladies on the not night out in Casey's back in the 1980s, you may have done. That the most penetrating stranger shall not be able to discover or find out what is not proper to be intimated, and sometimes you shall divert a discourse. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's just bollocks. Absolute bollocks. But my favourite, still 176, uh, section D, verse 5, of the management of the craft in working. All masons shall work honestly on working days. What do you do on the days you're not working then? <laughs> that they may live creditably on holy days. And just by a show of hands, just the men only, how many of you actually go to church on a Sunday? Look at that. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. The most expert of the fellow craftsmen shall be chosen or appointed the master or overseers of the Lord's work, who is to be called the master by those that work under him. The craftsmen are to avoid all ill language. Right? Now, the Masons, from what I can gather, were set up in the sort of Middle Ages as blokes who worked in the construction industry. <laughs> Quite possibly the blokes that use the most ill language ever. I couldn't, I'm sorry, I, I, I was deliberating whether I should take the piss out of the Masons tonight and I couldn't, I couldn't let the opportunity go by. Um, so, listen, thanks for coming out. Um, we've got three acts for you tonight. We'll have your first act on in a minute, um, then we'll have a break, and then your middle act and a break, and then your final act. Is that okay? Yeah. That's great. Um, so, my name's Nick Hill, I'm your MC. Um, I've been doing stand-up for, God, 20 odd years, and I've got to be honest, last year was probably the best year I've had doing comedy. I went to the Leicester Comedy Festival in February 2022, and I won the Silver Stand-Up of the Year Award. Yeah, let me just calm your expectations. It's basically um, a competition aimed at the over 55s. That was it. I mean, you had to do a bit more. And, and I got through to the final, and I did five minutes, and I won. And I phoned my wife. I said, you're never going to believe this, but after four years of trying, I've only gone and won. And she's like, oh, that's fantastic. What have you won? Now, you would have worked out from her accent. She is from Mumbai. Um, <laughs> I said, I've, 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 won a, I've won a trophy. All oh, right. Anything else? No? I'm back home two hours later showing her the trophy. She's like, that's lovely. But was there anything else? I was like, uh, no. 
Mm-hmm. They've been on the website, so I'm thinking, oh shit, have you? Um, <laughs> what about the £500 cash prize? I was gutted, right? Because I had that lined up for a special occasion. You said, what have they told you all through our marriage? I've got to be honest, there's been so many things it's hard to remember. Um, she said, never lie. And that's fine. That is, and of course, in theory, you shouldn't lie. But she went on a cruise last April with her friend Chris. Like, they were away for a week. They went to Norway. She phoned me on the Wednesday. Are you missing me? I remember what she said, never lie. I was like, no. <laughs> and then she started clutching her straws. I bet the dog's missing me. He wasn't. Me and him were having a fantastic time. We were down the pub every night. I was feeding him from the table. He was sleeping with me. We went and got tattoos. Well, I did. And uh, it got to about the Friday and I was looking at him. And I, I, I know he can't speak. But I was just looking at him and he was looking at me. And, and, and I could read his mind. He was like, Dad, this is fantastic, isn't it? Why don't we just move and not tell her? Um, <laughs> Because we've been married oh, way too long, 20, 20 odd years, and um, we got, we sort of got together. We met up. We had a date on on, on Valentine's Day. Um, I can't remember when it was. And um, I did the I did the romantic thing this year because even after 20 years, we still celebrate Valentine's Day. I did the romantic thing. I ordered some flowers, <coughs> and I said to the florist, "Can I order some flowers from the wife?" They said, "Yeah. Do you want a card?" I said, yeah, they said, what do you want on the card? I said, I'll just put, to Lynn, all my love, Nick. And she said, would you like a kiss on the bottom? <laughs> and I thought, that's really good service. Um, <laughs> so I said, yeah, what time do you want me there? She went, no, I meant, I meant on the bottom of the card. She said, yeah. And I said, yeah, I know. I'm a comedian, I was just trying to make a joke. And quick as a flash, she said, I bet you don't get many gigs. Um, <laughs> it's a bit harsh, isn't it, really? But we did celebrate Valentine's Day, and um, we were just chatting over a meal, and she said, uh, can you remember how we met? Oh, vaguely. She said, well, you had an advert in the Lonely Hearts column in The Citizen at the time. In fact, you had two, but I only replied to one. I said, what was that? She said, well, in the second one, you put how tall you were. I, I didn't realise she was heightest. About a week after we got together, I should have realised, because I said, do you fancy a trip to Alton Towers? And she said, no point you going. Um, <laughs> and after we were married, I came in one night, and she um, said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, what is it? She said, how do you feel about being only nine inches taller than the largest emperor penguin ever recorded. <laughs> she googled it, right? I could deal with that. She worked in a school at the time. I used to go and have coffee with her now and again. She worked at Castle Hill at Brockworth. I went in this one day and one of her friends said, oh, Lynn's in a meeting, but do you want a coffee while she wait? Yeah, yeah, I'll have a coffee. Do you want a biscuit? <laughs> Yeah, you're there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a biscuit. Why don't you papa pick up a penguin? Right? <laughs> I came out, all the kids knew, they were all waddling round the bloody playground like this. I, I forget, I've got to be honest, I forget how little I am. And um, I don't know if to share this with you. I watched, I wa we watched Strictly last year, that first series, because I was, I was keen to see how Ellie Simmons got on you know, the done the Paralympic. I mean, what a fantastic woman, you know, five gold medals, I think through the age of 13, 14. Absolutely brilliant, what a fantastic sportswoman. But we sat and watched that first episode that she was in. And I've got to be honest, I felt a little bit uncomfortable watching her. And I'm one end of the settee, and Lynn's the other. And, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but at the end of the first dance, her partner spun her across the floor, and she shot across the floor like that. And I'm ashamed, to, yeah, I'm ashamed to say I started laughing. And like my wife's looking at me, she said, what are you laughing at? I said, I fucking 
come on, look at that. If that doesn't remind you of dwarf tossing, nothing will. And then she said, right, that could be you. I said, well, it couldn't, because I'll never be invited to go on Strictly. She's like, I didn't mean that shit. I meant the dwarf thing. I said, right, because I've done the research. I said, I'll have you know, to, to qualify as a dwarf, what you have to qualify, obviously. I said, but a dwarf is considered somebody who's 58 inches or less. And she's like, well, how tall are you? I said, I'm 62 inches, so I'm safe by four inches. And again, quick as a flash, she said, yeah, but you're getting older, so you're shrinking. Um, <laughs> horrible, isn't it? You shouldn't do that. So, um, the other thing we haven't done tonight, we haven't done a sweepstake on, um, on the BBC presenter that's going to get uh, <laughs> caught <laughs> out. And I'm thinking as Mason, you probably know who it is already, don't you? you probably know. <laughs> no, it was alright, because I've been to William Hills today, I got 66 to 1 on Fiona Bruce. Um, <laughs> I was quite disappointed to see her on Antiques Roadshow on Sunday, so perhaps it's not her. So, have we got any ideas who it might be? You know. <laughs> Which one? The it's, it's the Hugh Edwards. Are we all are we all going for the Hugh Edwards? The you sound like you know far too much, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> top drums. We're gonna go for Hugh. Bless him. I hope it isn't, but he's well so fuck it. Um, <laughs> Listen, are you ready for your first act of the evening? I'm delighted this young lady's come up to entertain you. Her name is Louise, Louise Lee. On the count of three, if we could start the applause at the back of the room. Maybe the guy who's loitering by the bar. The Gloucesters take that. Um, <laughs> grandfathers. Um, so if you, if you four could start the applause on the count of three, bring it all the way to the room. One, two, three. Start the applause. Bring it all the way through. Welcome, Louise Lee. Yeah, sorry, 